While millions of movie fans have heard my voice in films, few have ever seen my face. I am what is known in Hollywood as a dubber or a ghost. I do the actual singing while the star mouths the words before the cameras. I have ghosted for Margaret O'Brien. I have been the singing voice of the star in several major movie musicals. I sang for Deborah Carr in The King and I, and for Natalie Wood in West Side Story. Time magazine recently referred to me as the ghostess with the mostest. What is your name, please? My name is Marnie Nixon. Marnie Nixon was one of the most prolific dubbers in Hollywood in the 50s and 60s. She began her movie career at MGM, first as a messenger, but it wasn't long before she caught the eye of the studio's talent scouts. And they were actually going to groom me for, to be a starlet. They were particularly impressed with her singing abilities, so instead of appearing in front of the camera, she made her movie debut off-screen as the angelic voices heard by Joan of Arc in the 1948 movie starring Ingrid Bergman. In her next movie, she provided the singing voice for 11-year-old child star Margaret O'Brien. She was 18 at the time. The scene required her to sing a Hindi lullaby, so Nixon pre-recorded the song and O'Brien mouthed the words on camera. She was never credited for the singing. She was what the movie industry called a ghost. A ghost, certainly in movie terms, would be somebody who does work like Marnie Nixon has always done that is kind of uh, uncredited. But that wasn't ever particularly talked about because they didn't, Hollywood didn't want to destroy the illusion. It wasn't long before Marnie was dubbing for the biggest stars in Hollywood. In 1953, to in the song, she had an amazing ability to mimic the voice of the person she was dubbing for, so her work was barely noticeable. I took great pride in having nobody notice that there was any difference in, uh, in the accent, in the speech pattern, and the sound, the timbre of their voice. I tried to color my voice so that it became them. In 1956, she landed her biggest role up to that time. She would be singing all of the songs for Deborah Carr in The King and I. The studio made it clear that secrecy was essential. The 20th Century Fox at that time, with the King and I, called me and they said that if anyone ever knew that I did any part, any part of the dubbing, that they would see to it that I wouldn't work in town again. Can you imagine? I was scared to death. Word did get out that the vocals had been dubbed, but it was Deborah Carr herself who didn't keep the secret although she downplayed just how much Marnie Nixon's vocals had been used. The headline of the article was, Deborah Tells a Secret, and she said my name. She said I only did the high notes, which was not really true. The King and I won five of the nine Oscars it was nominated for, including Best Music and Best Sound. It also won two Golden Globes, Best Musical and Best Actress for Deborah Carr. The soundtrack went to number one on the UK album charts. The soundtrack doesn't credit Marnie Nixon with the performance, it credits Deborah Carr instead. For The King and I, it was decided early on that all the singing would be dubbed. But when Marnie Nixon dubbed for Natalie Wood in West Side Story and Audrey Hepburn in My Fair Lady, in both cases the actors had recorded all the songs in their own voice, only for the film studio to decide it wasn't good enough and replace their singing with Marnie Nixon. Mm -hmm. 